So now we want to put some of our work that we've done on properties of summations to use. Uh, returning to this example that we began with, uh, where we noted that you know, four rectangles didn't really cut it. Right? We want to we want to be able to take this graph and we want to approximate the area under the curve using a greater number of rectangles so that we can improve our approximation. Right? And so the idea here is we start with, again, our sort of initial point x naught is 0. Our final point xn. Now, n is going to be either 16 or 1,000 here, but um, we'll just call it xn, right? We have x1, x2, and so on. Um, so when we, when we want to set this all up, right, the, the approximation that we want to do is we want to say, well, this area is approximated by this sum, i going from 1 to n, f of some ci, times delta x i, right? Now, what we're going to do in our, our case is we're actually going to um, use a uniform partition. I guess we haven't quite introduced the word partition yet, but that's okay. Um, what that means is we're going to take all the rectangles to have the same width. And so we have an interval of total length um, 4 minus 0, right endpoint, minus left endpoint. We're going to divide that into n equal pieces. So it looks like 4 over n. Okay? And the example asks us to use right endpoints. And so that means we're going to use ci to be xi. Okay? So let's think about, you know, how do we get to that xi? Well, you know, x0, x0 is 0, x1, right? x1 is going to be 0 plus delta x, right? x2, we go once, twice, right? x2 will be 0 plus 2 delta x, right? Then we add delta x again. x3 will be 0 plus 3 delta x x4, 4 delta x, x5, 5 delta x. Um, and so in general, it's, it's going to be the left endpoint plus i times delta x, but the left endpoint is 0, and delta x is 4 over n. So this just becomes 4i over n. Okay. So that's sort of our, our general setup here. So come over here. We do part a n is equal to 16, okay? So our area is approximately the sum i going from 1 oops, to 16, f of xi times delta x, right? Now, um, xi is, is going to be, well, in this case, it's 4i over, so our n is 16, so that's i over 4, okay? Uh, so f of xi is going to be, so here's our f of x, right? So it's going to be um, 4 times i over 4 minus i over 4 squared, so that is i minus i squared over 16. Delta x is just 4 over 16, which is 1 over 4. Okay. So we put all that in. Sum i going from 1 to 16 of i minus i squared over 16 times 1 over 4. And so what we can do now is we can push the 1 over 4 in, and we can use properties of summations. Right? So this is going to be, so first of all, 1 to 16. So it's i over 4, and then i squared over 16. And our properties will let us break that up into two terms and pull out the constants. So we can write it like this, 1 over 4, sum i going from 1 
to 16 of i minus 1 over 16 times the sum i going from 1 to 16 of i squared. Now we pull out those summation formulas, okay? It's 1 over 4 times, so for 16, right? So it's 16, it's n times n plus 1. So 16 times 16 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 16, and it's n, 16, times n plus 1, right? 17, times 2n plus 1, so that's uh, 33 divided by 6. Okay. Um, and from here, you kind of clean it up a little bit, right? So it's going to be, let me see, um, 16 over 4 is 4 over 2 is just 2. So this is, uh, we're left with 2 times 17 in that spot, and then, well, 16, 16 cancel, um, minus 17 times 33 over 6. Okay, so I guess we could factor out the 17, and then we have 2 minus, hmm, 33 over 6. All right. Which makes me worry that I've messed something up because we shouldn't get a negative answer, right? Um, okay, so let's just double check and make sure everything is okay. Um, 4x minus x squared. Okay, so let's see, i over 4 is our, right, uh, right end point. Yeah, because uh, n is 16, so 4i over 16. Okay, that's fine. So that's just i. That is i squared over 16. And, ah, yes. I did not multiply in the one quarter here. All right, four times 16 is 64. Ah, so that should have been a 64. And if I cancel that, I'm just left with a 4. So then this is a, a 24. Okay. Well, that works a little bit better. 24. Uh, 48 minus 33, 15. So it's, it's 17 times 15 over 24. And if I, if I had a calculator, I could probably clean that up a little bit more. But we'll, I don't know, we'll leave it at that. Because... We still have to do a thousand rectangles, right? Um, so for a thousand rectangles, well, the thing is not a lot actually changes. The area is now approximated by, well, the sum goes from uh, one to a thousand, right? Um, my xi becomes 4i over a thousand, so that's now i over 250, right? My, my delta x is 4 over 1,000, so 1 over 250. And so then it's going to be kind of the same, the same story, right? We, we do 4 times, so what is 4 over 250? Does it simplify? Oh, who cares? No, it doesn't really. Well, okay, so 4i over 250. And then we do that squared, so i squared over 250 squared. And then we multiply by the delta x, right? So 1 over 250. Okay, so uh, what we get is something that looks like this. 1 over 250 squared times the sum i going from 1 to 1,000 of i. Um, ah, 4 over 250 squared, right? Um, minus 1 over 250 cubed times the sum i going from 1 to 1,000 of i squared, right? 
And then, and then you say, okay, well, this is this works out to be a thousand times a thousand and one over two. This works out to be a thousand times a thousand and one times two thousand and one all over six. Uh, you plug those in. You simplify. This is now at this point calculator work. Um, and you will get a decimal answer, which we expect is probably going to be better than the decimal answer that we got here, right? Um, and now, the interesting thing, we're going to see this moving forward. It seems like as n gets bigger, this is going to get sort of hopelessly complicated, right? It's going to be a huge mess. Um, it's cleaner than it looks. We're going to see that actually if we do this in general for an arbitrary n, we'll be able to actually simplify this. And it's going to look a lot nicer than it does here. <laughs>